right, well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cameron Ali Gur. My pronouns are he, him, his, and it is my pleasure to be your MC today for our, for our, our first generation college celebration. Thank you all for being uh, with us today to celebrate our first generation community. As a first generation uh, student and now scholar practitioner, I am very excited to lead planning efforts for the Student Success Initiatives Unit at Western Washington University in supporting first generation initiatives on our campus. I would like to share that the chat is currently disabled at this time. However, this feature will be turned on during our student panel section of our program. But before we begin to share with you all the amazing first generation projects that are underway and our goals for this and next academic year, I would like to introduce Laura Ballou who will lead us in our land acknowledgement. Laura Ballou serves as Western's inaugural executive director of American Indian, Alaska Native and First Nation relations to tribal liaison to the president. She's an enrolled member of the Swinomish tribe who has lived on the Lummi reservation for over 40 years and identifies as a first generation college student. We are delighted and honored to welcome Laura Ballou into this virtual space to provide the tribal land statement, as well as some words of wisdom from a tribal first generation student perspective. Laurel. Thank you, Cameron. My name is Laura Ballou. My ancestral name is Sesia Hamia and Sikatsvetsut. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we gather today on the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish people who have lived in the Salish Sea Basin throughout the San Juan Islands and the North Cascades watershed from time immemorial. Please join me in expressing our deepest respect and gratitude for our indigenous neighbors, the Lummi Nation and Nixat tribe for their enduring care and protection of our shared lands and waterways. I myself identify as a first generation student and graduate with two words, hope and dreams. I have carried the hopes of my parents and grandparents to be a college graduate. Neither my grandparents nor my parents graduated college, but they were strong leaders within our tribal community. They worked hard and encouraged their children and grandchildren to consider a college degree as an opportunity to lead and be role models for the generations who follow. As I continue my academic journey, I've realized the hopes and dreams of my ancestors are what has sustained me through the challenges and triumphs of education. And for me, success is not a grade, but how we learn to respect and appreciate everyone we meet along the way. Thank you. Thank you, Laurel, for providing us with traditional customs of land recognition to acknowledge that indigenous peoples are the original stewards of the lands on which we now live. And thank you for sharing with us part of your own story and narrative, your continued advocacy for the many tribal communities and native organizations throughout the Pacific Northwest is met with admiration. Why do we celebrate first generation students on November 8th? This date was selected for the annual national first generation college celebration to honor the anniversary of the signing of the Higher Education Act of 1965. Much like other hallmark legislation of that era, such as the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965, this act was intended to help level a playing field that for too long had been weighed against Americans from minority and low income backgrounds. In addition to creating federal grants and loan programs to help students finance their educations, the legislation made key investments in institutions of higher education. Additionally, the Higher Education Act ushered in programs, particularly the federal TRIO programs, necessary for post-secondary access, retention, and completion for low-income potential first-generation college graduates. Western Washington University has a long history of supporting first-generation students, 
particularly through the services and programs offered by the Student Outreach Services Office. First generation students are defined by Western as students whose parents or guardians have not completed a bachelor's degree. I want to recognize the leadership that Joan Newland has provided to the Student Outreach Services team in addressing opportunity and achievement gaps of our first generation college students. Because of Joan's leadership and focus on access, diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts, the Center for First Generation Student Success recently awarded Western Washington University with the First Gen Forward designation. First Gen Forward is the nation's first recognition program acknowledging higher education institutions for their commitment to first generation student success. At this time, I would like to ask Joan to share a little bit more about how Western received this national recognition and honor. Thank you, Cameron, for the really nice introduction and for laying a strong foundation for today's event. I have been asked to share a few words about how Western joined the First Gen Forward 2021-22 cohort of institutions of higher education. Many of you will hear for the first time about the Center for First Generation Student Success, an initiative of NASPA and the Souter Foundation. These organizations are student-centered and committed to advancing first-generation student success across the nation. As sometimes happens, opportunities present themselves amid times when we are focused on our daily responsibilities. In my case, I was attending a virtual conference when the application invitation filled my emails and was almost overlooked. I knew somehow that this opportunity should not go unnoticed. After all, Cameron and I had been looking for a way to launch a first generation initiative. So instead of ignoring this email, I took the opportunity and applied. I entered a competitive process by applying in December of 2020. This meant Western had to meet certain requirements, such as securing senior leadership support and their commitment to participation, as well as fulfilling the requirements of participation. We learned in February of 2021 that Western had been selected to join 58 first-gen forward schools across the nation as part of a third group of cohorts. So what does this look like? First, we received permission for the university to use the First Gen Forward logo that designated Western as a school that is committed to supporting first generation students. Second, it meant enrolling in a First Gen course that has requirements we must meet. The course is about Western's commitment to serving its first generation students. To make this manageable, the Center for First Generation Student Success assigned Western to the NorCal Pacific Northwest cohort that includes Edmonds College, Oregon State University, and the University of Portland. We meet about half a dozen times per quarter to share information, hold one another accountable, and to lift up one another, much as first generation students do with each other. In closing, while Student Outreach Services has a long history of serving first-generation students, today is a greater opportunity to widen our community and to invite our campus to deepen its commitment to these students. I look forward to hearing our speakers share their stories. Thank you. Thank you, Joan, for your servant leadership and for sharing with us how Student Outreach Services has demonstrated a commitment to improving experiences and advancing outcomes of our first-generation college students. Our next guest will speak more about the importance of Western being a first-gen forward institution and how that supports our commitment and priority in advancing student success and inclusive excellence here at Western. President Sabah Rangawa, a first-generation college student himself, witnessed the transformative power of higher education in his own life and will also share how his first-gen experiences have informed his work and leadership through more than three decades of distinguished service in higher education. 
President Randawa. Cameron, thank you for your kind introduction. I would also like to thank Joan Olin and Sarah Wilson for their leadership on student success initiatives and for helping Western achieve this special designation as a first generation forward institution. Becoming a first gen forward institution is an important step for Western. It offers an opportunity to take a systems level approach to the work that we have been doing on a smaller scale in places like student outreach services. I think all of you know that advancing inclusive student success is the central pillar of Western's mission and goals. And nowhere is it more applicable than in the case of first generation students. We recognize that accessible, high quality public education is perhaps the most powerful engine society has, has to promote upward mobility and social justice for individuals and communities. Becoming a first gen forward institution helps, helps us operationalize those commitments and resources in a more focused way than we have done in the past. As Cameron mentioned, I am a first generation college student, but before I share a little bit of my story, I'd like to share a couple of other observations with you. One of the most compelling statistics that has stayed with me and that I've shared on new, numerous occasions previously, including when I interviewed for this position five years ago, is the story around attainment gaps as measured by graduation rates from four-year institutions like Western Washington University. If you look at a 40-year period between 1970 and 2010, and federal statistics are a little late in terms of catching up, but anyhow, if you look at the 40-year period, the graduation rate for students who come from families whose income is in the top quartile, top 25% in the nation, has doubled during that time from 40% in 1970 to about 78%. The graduation rates for students from families with income in the bottom quartile over that 40 year period has been stuck at 9% during that entire time period. This morning, I thought I better check what the latest number is. And the latest number reported is the 2016 rate, which is 11%. So it has barely moved even six years later than the number I'm sharing with you. A substantial number of first-gen students coming to Western and to our higher education institutions come from families who are in the bottom or the bottom two quartiles when it comes to um, uh, uh, family income. Second, I was looking at the web page on the Student Outreach Services website that includes pictures and mini bios of our first-generation faculty and staff. My first reaction was that it was incredibly, incredibly inspiring to see how many of our colleagues at Western overcame the odds to become the first in their families to receive a college degree and become successful professionals. Increasing access and success for first generation students is still, a, is still an enormous work in progress for higher education but many of these individuals truly had an uphill battle to get their degrees. All of this makes me think what an asset these individuals are to Western as we deepen our commitment to first generation students. Driving our deepest commitments forward is not just about developing initiatives and programs, though they are important, but really developing an institution culture in which everyone, regardless of their role, see student success as their job. Beyond their professional skills, our first generation faculty and staff bring a special set of experiences, perspectives and identities that strengthen our culture even more for this important work. My next thought scrolling through the pictures and bios was appreciation for the great diversity of identities, experiences and professional roles of these individuals at Western. 
This grounds the realization that there is no first generation type, no one, no one place from which we all come or destination where we all wind up. There is strength in this diversity and a call to drop assumptions or stereotypes. It is also a reminder that we all bring different experiences to the table and we all need teachers, support staff, and others to meet us as individuals where we are. I am grateful to my colleagues for sharing their stories. Now I have to tell you that I'm always reluctant to share my story, not, not because I am ashamed of it. You know, in fact, I am who I am because of my story and my journey. I'm reluctant to share my story because I do not want to make it about myself. Nevertheless, reading stories of my colleagues encouraged me to share just a little bit about my journey with you today. As, as you may know, I was born and raised in Pakistan. My parents came of age during a difficult time in South Asia, First World War II, followed by the division of the subcontinent that resulted in the two countries that are now India and Pakistan. My father immigrated from Delhi, which, was, which is in India, to Lahore, which is now in Pakistan in 1947. He witnessed extreme violence, rape, and death. In fact, he lost many of his own family and friends to that violence. And the trauma that resulted deeply impacted him throughout his life. He was a high school graduate, but never went to college. And my mother barely made it to middle school. Thank, thankfully for me and my sister, my parents did realize the value of education. And while neither of them went to college, nor to the best of my knowledge did anyone else in our immediate family around us, they made sure that we completed high school and, and entered college. And the rest was up to us. It wasn't easy but I had observed my parents' struggles. I was part of those struggles and not just financial, but also psychological and emotional challenges. That was a strong motivator for me. And yet I just can't chalk success to my hard work. Support and mentorship of a few individuals at critical times in this journey played an important role. And I have often wondered about the role of serendipity in my own life. The storyline would be very different were it not for a lucky break here or there, or some decision based on instinct that said, do this rather than that. But I will leave that for another time. I am thankful for my journey. I am grateful to many kind people, starting with my parents, and I wouldn't have it any other way. So let me conclude with a brief message for our first generation students. You absolutely belong at Western. Your journey and success matters to us and it matters to me personally. I think one of the hardest thing about the first generation experience is feeling like you are in between worlds, at home in neither and without a map for navigating this foreign territory. It is our job to help foster a caring, supportive community that meets individuals where they are, connects them with the resources they need and reinforces to our first gen students their value, safety and worth. I started my comments with the observation that advancing inclusive student success is central to our priorities and our work. For me, inclusive student success is if you may, a universal goal in the sense that is a common goal for every student at Western. However, the path to that success is different for every student. Being a first gen institution will require our creativity and our compassion in opening those pathways unique for individual students and a belief that every student at Western can succeed and that every employee at Western can help make the difference for them. Thanks again to everyone who has made the celebration possible and wonderful next step for Western.
Thank you, Sabah, for your message and, of course, support. As you also put it, Western Strategic Plan recognizes that our single most important challenge is to eliminate diverse and underrepresented socioeconomic background and to ensure that we increase retention and persistent rates and the number of each of such graduates, in particular for our first generation college students. It is now time to announce the winner of Western's inaugural first generation graphic design contest. The purpose of this contest was to have students create an identity mark or design that celebrates and supports our first generation community at Western. A committee of first generation students and employees reviewed all eligible submissions to evaluate and score the overall design, visual impact, artist statements, and technical guidelines to select the winning graphic design. A special thanks to the review committee for your time and support in selecting our winner. I'm excited to share that Dennis Benlot is the winner of the contest and will receive a $100 Amazon gift card for creating Western's first generation graphic design. Let me show that to you real quick. Dennis, did you want to say a few quick words about your beautiful graphic design? Of course, yeah. So I chose to participate in this contest because I am myself a first-generation student. Uh, my graphic design represents that no matter what race, ethnicity, and culture you are, you are leading your own future in a flexible Western as your platform for moving forward in whatever career path you chose. A gradient Chosen is an analogy that not every single first-gen student are specifically from one background and that we have many unique experiences and perspectives. The abstract shape of the human in the middle represents the embodiment of Western Washington University. The human icon, though, is not the center that unites all the other gradients. Rather, it is the acting platform to where the human gradients surrounding it can still have the opportunity to identify with their, inter, with their intersectionalities freely without having to assimilate to a melting pot. I'm really excited to, and be thankful to be the winner of the contest and that my graphic design was chosen to represent the first gen community here at Western. Thank you, Dennis. As you can see, our first generation students have voices that need to be heard, seen, and valued. To amplify this narrative, we recruited three first-generation students to share how they are navigating the college experience here at Western. However, one of our student panelists is feeling under the weather today and will not be joining us. So we will move forward with our two. These panelists will address three key areas that play a critical part to a first-generation college student's success. Their personal narrative, connection to story, the importance of identity, both cultural and social, and the value of community, a sense of belonging. As a reminder, we will now open up the chat feature. We are happy to take any questions you may have for any of our presenters today. And also, please feel free to leave comments for our student panelists. We will begin our student panel with Atiana Garza. Atiana. Hello. My name is Atiana and my pronouns are she, hers. I am originally from Auburn, Washington, and I am currently a junior at Western Washington, majoring in multidisciplinary studies with a focus in cultural health and development. I decided to attend college because no one in my family had before, and I was the first to graduate with a high school degree, and I'm determined to be the first to, de I am so sorry, I am so nervous. Um, I'm the first, to, I'm determined to be the first to graduate with a college degree as well. Um, to me, a college degree means strength, as I will address further in my speech. Life hasn't always been easy, but I never wanted that to be an excuse to not follow my dreams or aspirations. And my first impression of Western was simply fear, 
everything was huge and I didn't know if I was cut out for college. But since I've been here, I've learned to love the campus, the community and Bellingham as a whole. It really feels like home here and I am truly grateful that I got to be here. Um, <laughs> I would like to start the next part by saying that yes, even though my life has been difficult, I hope that from listening to my story, you are all able to gain some insight of all of the experiences college students have to face. Throughout my adolescence and into my first two years of college, I was what, what is considered a homeless youth. And for me, this created a very large imposter syndrome. I had never felt like I belonged because there was no community here for me. That, there was no community here for me or for people experiencing similar situations. And this affected me both socially and academically. Things that would have helped my freshman year is simply finding that sense of community, finding help where I needed it, and really being able to connect with people. During my freshman year, the student outreach services, more specifically Cameron and Maria within the, within the outreach services, were essential to aiding my, aiding my college experience. I would not have survived my freshman year without them, truly. In my sophomore year, the creation of the Western Success Scholars, a program dedicated to aiding homeless and foster youth, helped me found the community that I was lacking before. And I am forever grateful that I now get to work with them as a peer navigator. And these same offices support me throughout these past four years. And I know that if I'm ever feeling lost or in the need of any assistance, that they will be there to help me. And I know that I can get through this. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Atiana, for your narrative and your perspective. We'll now move on to our next student panelist, Lord Corbin Dunlap. Hello, uh, my name is Corbin Dunlap. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I'm originally from down south in Olympia. Uh, I'm currently a returning sophomore this year, hopefully majoring in computer science, and I'm living in campus in Alma Clark. Well, uh, I suppose the first thing I should talk about is as to why I decided to attend WWU and college in general. Um, first things first, I love learning and I love education. I love the experience of going to classes and I suppose I really couldn't envision myself doing anything else after high school. Um, I chose WWU specifically due to not only its location, but its atmosphere. The first time I ever set foot here, I realized I wanted to attend my college years here. And uh, getting a little bit deeper, um, I guess another reason as to why I chose college and to get a degree in general is due to its meaning to me and my family. My family has always been a uh, family of academics. Uh, both my birth parents were actually considered valedictorians for their schools. And my father was a track star on top of all that. Uh, they each wanted to go to college, actually, but uh, they couldn't, as both came from extremely poor Texas families. And for all my father's abilities on the field, uh, his town wasn't even considered for a scholarship. They both essentially wanted to go to college, but they were forced to go into the military. Um, it was the only way out of their town, and it was the only way they could actually provide money for their family. But fortunately, along the way, they had me. So that's a good thing. Um, this isn't an uncommon story, uh, especially from where I come from. Not even in my own family is it an uncommon story as it happened in my grandparents' generation too. My grandfather, in fact, nearly had a degree. He only was a couple credits away, but it ended up being too expensive and he just decided to never go back on it. To us, a college degree was an unattainable accomplishment. It was something that we talked about, but nothing that we can actually attain. And I want to prove to my family and to me myself that we can do it. We aren't just poor people stuck in the middle of Texas that can't get anywhere. That isn't to say that uh, my road hasn't been a little bit bumpy or I haven't had any problems. While WWU is a beautiful campus and the arbitorium is one of my favorite places to explore, especially during my first year. 
Um, as a side note, if you haven't been there during the winter, when especially it's snowing, it's really one of the most beautiful things you can see. I did face some challenges here in my first year though. Um, 2020 was a uh, tumultuous year at best. Uh, and I gotta say, uh, my experiences weren't that different from many others. I grew up with a family always around me, having at least five to seven people inside a household. But uh, when I came here at first year, uh, it was isolation. So I had to stick inside a dorm by myself. And I will admit that kind of sucked. Um, it really showed inside myself how much I desire to be around people. Um, I isolated myself actually because of it. Yeah, I had a really, really hard time speaking to others, especially the people like cafeteria staff. I couldn't even speak to them. I don't think anybody should actually experience that or should be forced to live on campus by themselves. If you feel alone or are just planning on living on campus, I implore you to just reach out and connect with people. WU is a great place, but I think the thing that really appeals to me the most and makes it special is the people here. On my dorm right now, there's a guy who went to the Amazon for a high school class to study indigenous people. There's another guy who's so into snowboarding that he's ready to spend thousands of dollars just to go every year and just spend the time boarding. It's crazy. There's so many places and events to meet interesting people. I'm living right now below the Black Affinity Housing, something I really appreciate as a Black kid who grew up in Kentucky, not seeing anybody who even looked like me going to college. I don't think I could have chosen a better place to go to as a first generation student. And I think others will be able to see the value of going to WWU as well. Thank you for watching me ramble a bit and I hope you have a good day. Thank you, Corbin, for sharing your narrative and your experiences. Tatiana as well. We want to invite the, an opportunity now for our audience to perhaps provide some comments and some questions for our two panelists. And also, if there are any questions for our speakers that have spoken thus far. So we will take a few minutes to read the chat and Susan will be moderating that for us. And then hopefully you have some questions for both Corbin and Atiana in particular. You can see the love coming in, Corbin and Atiana. Just a lot of thank yous for sharing your stories. Both of you did a good job. We have a question, Susan. Can you read that? Yeah. So it says, "What would you want to say to a high school student considering Western?" Uh, I suppose I can start off by saying that. Um, well, if I want to talk to a high school student considering Western or really anybody like, I know you can look up to colleges up to like middle school, <laughs> even then, yeah, people can play out to that. But I want to say that it's really just a great campus. It has great people and it's really just a great location. I don't think I've ever seen like a more like, picture perfect campus than like this place, honestly. Um, yeah, no, I definitely agree with Corbin. Uh, this, this campus is beautiful and my favorite time to be here is in the fall. All the leaves are falling and it's just absolutely gorgeous here. Um, if you're considering Western, I really, um, I really suggest that you you would visit here and maybe just see how you feel. That was a really big part of how well, or how I chose Western is when I came here, everything was really intimidating, but I loved how beautiful it was. And I knew that this was the place for me. Okay. So um, we have a question from Emily. It says, many of us, it's scrolling so fast. <laughs> Many of us are also first-generation students, but may, maybe more than 
20 years ago. So what would you, uh, what would staff and faculty know about being a first generation student today? Um, I can go with this one. I, I think that a lot of the struggles that first generation students face, especially academically and socially, are essentially the same in some cases, though the situation behind that student may be different. We all struggle finding friends, getting started with our classes. It's all difficult at first. It's never going to be easy. And I think that that's something that staff and faculty can still relate to. Okay. The question is, what are your plans for after Western? Well, uh, personally for me, uh, after Western, I hope to take my computer science degree, hopefully go into a bit of the IT field. Um, it's actually really lucky that I managed to get around this area, or at least living in Washington itself. Uh, as it turns out, most of my family friends <laughs> are into IT, so it's kind of like a weird family kind of business thing, pseudo family business thing. We're all recommending each other into different businesses. Um, I'm actually not sure what I'm going to do yet after I finish college. I've considered the Peace Corps for a while. I even considered doing human resources, which is one of the jobs I do here on campus. Um, but I really love helping people. And right now with the peer navigators, I get to help um, homeless youth. And I think that that's something I might consider doing. What advice would you give to a first-generation student who may be a little overwhelmed about choosing a major? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> this is a, a major thing, especially for first-generation students, because um, I know specifically for me, uh, once I got up to at least my freshman year or my college level, I can no longer look at my parents for like really much help on choosing degrees or like getting into classes or such as that. And it was really just a learning experience for us all. Um, for me in general, uh, I think in order to choose a major, you want to choose something that not only you can find yourself to love, but you already love by itself. Uh, it's a bit difficult to say, but there's some things that you can grow into. I want to say that. If you don't feel like you can immediately find something now, just see if you can grow into something. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead, on. Oh, I was just going to say, uh, for me, I did not start in this major. I actually switched majors the beginning of this year. Um, so it, it's hard to say whether you're going to find one that you love right away. Um, but the freshman, your freshman year is mostly getting general requirements out of the way, at least here at Western. So I got to learn a lot of different things that I loved that I didn't know I loved throughout those, that first year. So that's a really good way to learn what you want to do. So and the other questions, what would have been the best way to connect um, you or connect a student with resources at the very beginning of the time, your time at Western? It sounds like this was a, might have been a barrier for you. Yeah. Yeah, this especially was a little bit harder for me. Um, so what my method was after the first week or two was I kind of went down a list of different departments that I think I would eventually uh, have to talk to. Uh, I went to registrar. Uh, I deal with the VA because both my parents are dealing with the military. Uh, I went to housing, obviously, and I just asked them the usual couple of questions that you would say, like, uh, do I have to make payments through a specific method? Uh, when do uh, GI Bill, if any of you have to deal with uh, GI Bill, when is that coming again? Uh, and then you make sure to keep down their numbers and just remember that you can talk to them at any time. They're meant to be used. That's probably the hardest thing to remember that you can talk to people here. 
So as a freshman, speaking as a freshman, so what was one thing you guys wish you knew about college in general? Something I wish I knew is just how different it was going to be from what all of my high school teachers told me. They all <laughs> told me that like it was going to be so much harder, which it is. It is very difficult, but like I call one of my professors Charlie and I don't call him professor at all. And it's also very casual while being difficult. And I wish I knew that going in because it would have made asking questions and asking for help a lot easier. Is there any message or any advice you'd like to give to faculty who are here who are first generation themselves or maybe others that are maybe even not? Um, sorry, Corbin, you can. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's fine. Um, so any advice to any faculty first generation themselves? Um, I actually can't exactly share it because I know that as a faculty member, you probably have very different lives to an average student. You have to deal with uh, going to work all the time and you have to deal around schedules. So the only advice I can really give you is to ensure that you plan around, I suppose. I think one of the actual fa faculty members would probably be the best to talk to about this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry if that's a little bit too vague. Um, yeah. It was just clarifying the question really quick. It was just advice for faculty about first gen or others who are not? Yes, what, what would you like to give a faculty who are like first gen themselves? Okay. Um, well, so just a piece of advice that I guess I would have liked for my faculty during my first year would have been, um, I know that professors and faculty are so busy and that they have a lot of work that they have to do, but if someone saw like maybe somebody struggling in the class or like, and the professor could see that, maybe just a quick email because I know that that would have helped me a lot feeling more comfortable just reaching back out to that professor and maybe asking for help. So do you have any tips on how to self-motivate someone um, and finding a, a, a belonging for your community um, but not feeling if they're not feeling encouraged uh, just general tips in general? As for, uh, let's say the first part for motivation, that is probably one of been the hardest things to get through me, uh, especially. Uh, I think another one thing that gets me motivated is I kind of try to see behind the crest of the hill, I suppose would be the best way to describe it. I try to see what I can do after I get things done. So that when I get things done, I fully have everything planned out. Uh, in a way for me, this is basically, I want to hang out with some of my dorm mates and some of my friends here. So I decide to just get everything done as quickly as I can and as efficiently as I can. And even then, uh, if I have somebody that's inside a class with me that I'm also friends with, I try to work with them to get through it. So this question is for every for Dennis, Adiana, and Corbin. Um, what has been your greatest success as a student since starting, either academically or otherwise? I honestly think that one of my greatest successes would have been getting through my freshman year. It was extremely difficult. So just getting through it is great. But uh, since then, I would say working with WSS has been one of my greatest accomplishments thus far. Yeah, I have to agree with uh, Atiana. Really just getting through your first freshman year 
uh, it feels like you just fully establish yourself into the college life after that. Uh, it really just shows that like you're here and you've done it. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I think that, and honestly, <laughs> it's kind of silly, but I think my greatest success was I'm terrible at arts. Uh, I, I am absolutely colorblind and I have deaf perception issues. So things just don't work out for me. So when I took an art class and I got like a glowing review from my uh, professor, it was probably one of the best feelings I've had in a while. Yeah. Um, man, I guess uh, breaking the stereotype for me, at least. Um, my mom wanted me to pursue a medical degree and my dad wanted me to go into the Air Force or the Navy. And I just said, kind of, no, I want to go to college. So I said, screw it. Uh, <laughs> And I've curved my own path, you know, they didn't want me to. And I think it's probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. Uh, just, yeah, I mean, I, I got the, uh, the opposite of Corbin, actually, the most horrible critique on one of my first ever graphic design works back in high school. And I, for some reason, I was very petty at that time. And I said, you know what? Let me just make my entire career based on graphic design just because of that comment. So that's the reason <laughs> that's my biggest success story right there. So and is it a question for us? Is there something more Western could have done to help bridge the gap between financial aid, uh, working while going to school and contributions from your family? Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm not really sure about this one. Um, bridging the gap between financial aid, working while going to school and contributions from your family. Uh, my family, at least for me, was unable to contribute any money for college. Um, and that was really hard. But through scholarships and there are different uh, financial aid relief programs that they have, uh, especially during the beginning of the quarters. I know that those were really helpful for me. Uh, just things like that, I suppose. I'm so sorry. I'm not sure if I completely answered that question. Yeah, I would kind of also not have a lot to speak about this. Um, it's I can't say a specific thing that WWE could have done or just anybody could have done in general because I think I, I had just as hard time just like there's a bit of a stumble afterwards after getting like accepted and finally like trying to set up financials. There's a bit of a stumble and I definitely hit that stumble and I managed to get through it, but I managed to get th through it due to um, the VA, really. That's what really helped me a lot, just constantly calling and talking. And I think if you talk to the financial aid department constantly, that's really the way you can get through it. Great. Uh, how about a round of applause for our student panelists today? Thank you everyone for your wonderful comments on the side. And Corbin, Atiana, and Dennis, if you don't mind scrolling through and reading those remarks, I think you will able to support me by doing that. So proud to have you as students at Western Michigan. Thank you to each one of our panelists for sharing your first generation narratives and intersectionalities with us today. It is through our understanding of the first gen identity and experience we may better support the unique needs of first gen students. Know that Western will continue to support your journey both in and out of the classroom to meet your academic and life goals. Simply put, we care and you belong here. It is now your turn, the audience, to join in on today's celebration. Please have your computer or cell phones ready for this fun activity. We will be using an interactive tool called Poll Everywhere to create a word cloud 
that best describes what a first-generation student is at Western. I encourage everyone to please join in to create this visual as we plan to use this word cloud in our future initiatives. In the spirit of the celebration, we will be using an asset-based approach that focuses on the strengths, values, and skills that first-generation students bring to the campus and inside the classroom. Instructions to join Poll Everywhere are available now in the chat. Please take a minute to join with one of the two options provided. You will be greeted with a message that you've joined in the Student Outreach Services SOS 387 session and that your phone number and responses are completely private. After that, and when ready, simply text in your word. I'm going to be sharing my screen. There we go. And here are some wonderful words that have already come up. Note, it may take a few seconds for your responses to show up on the screen. Give it another minute for our audience to participate. Thank you. What a wonderful visual that describes our first generation community here at Western. Thank you all for your participation. Before we close the celebration, I would like to thank Sarah Wilson for her leadership and mentorship with our first generation initiatives and kindly ask her to provide the campus with a few updates about the many projects and collaborations the Student Success Initiatives Unit is involved in. Cameron, thank you for that introduction. Um, I'd like to start by thanking all of our speakers for sharing their stories and perspectives with us today, and to all of you for finding time in your busy schedule to attend this celebration. While this is a national day of celebration, our work and our efforts will continue throughout the year. In addition to the graphic design contest we just concluded, thanks to Western's design team, we also have a set of four new first-gen themed virtual backgrounds available for your use during your Zoom and Teams meetings. A link to those backgrounds will be placed in the chat today, and we invite you to utilize those backgrounds this week and throughout the year. We were also recently featured on the Center for First Generation Student Success website with a blog post regarding a focus group project that Cameron led last spring and we've just concluded a survey to gather additional insights from our first generation students. The data from these assessment efforts will help guide future planning and will be shared with the first gen collective that we are in the process of forming. The collective will in include members from across campus who are engaged in efforts to support first generation students and will create opportunities for collaboration and for a comprehensive understanding of the work that we are all doing. Our unit will also be focusing this year on developing a first-generation toolkit, both in English and Spanish, for families of first-generation students. From our focus group feedback, students spoke strongly to the need to help their family members understand the college experience and the many programs and services that are available to assist their students in being successful. And finally, we invite all of you to visit Student Outreach Services website to learn more about our first generation community here at Western and to see what workshops and events will be taking place over the next couple of days to celebrate our first generation community. Cameron, with that, I'll turn it back to you for closing remarks.
Thank you, Sarah. Today's celebration kicks off our first gen week. We have some very amazing workshops and events offered over the next few days. Please take a look at our Student Outreach Services First Generation website for specifics about each activity. In fact, there's a chat, there's a link in the chat right now for you to access. Additionally, several academic departments are also supporting first gen students within their own respective areas and will be reaching out to their students soon if they have not done so already. We thank all individuals and departments who are participating this year and sharing their resources and services to our first generation community. Speaking of resources, please take a look at the chat as there will be links made available for you to learn more about today's first generation celebration and discussions, as well as of all the workshops and events offered during our first gen week, Tuesday and Wednesday. And lastly, a special thanks to everyone who was involved behind the scenes to make the celebration happen today. There were many pieces to the puzzle, and as they say, it takes a village. This concludes our 2021 First Generation College Celebration. On behalf of Western, thank you all for making time in your busy schedules to join us this afternoon to celebrate our wonderful First Generation community. Have a great evening, everyone.